You're listening to the ESO Network, your station for all things geek. This is episode 197 of the Soulforge Podcast. Welcome to the Soul Forge, a place of silent mystery, quiet contemplation, and outright mayhem. Join your host, Sean Vanderloo, as he guides you through the adventures of living. Together, we'll talk about life and love, sex and dating, joy and heartache, memories and loss, and so much more. Don't worry, it's not nearly as pretentious as it sounds. Get ready for life, the universe, and everything on The Soul Forge. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Soul Forge podcast. As always, week after week, I'm your host, Sean. And today I have a super special guest, actually two of them. So this week, we're talking about marriage success, as you can tell from the title. We're in for an exciting conversation with my brother and his wife. We're talking about marriage success. And to introduce themselves, on my right is Brother Curtis. On my left, he's eating pizza, so uh, he's not going to say anything for a moment. On my left is his loving wife of many years. Her name is Kate. How are you guys doing today? We're well. Doing fantastic. Thank you for asking. Hey, glad to be here. What are you drinking? What's your beverage of choice? Sleeman's. Sleeman's. And you're having a pizza and water? I'm having pizza and water, yes indeed. All right, fantastic. Now that background is out of the way. Uh, I've known you for about 40 years. (laughs) Just about all my life. Just about, (laughs) yes. And when did you and Curtis get involved? What what was that year? How long have I known you for? 15 years. Has it been that long already? Yes. Okay, all right, so 15 years. So I don't have any questions prepared. I just wanted to talk about relationships in general and uh, how you guys met and any uh, obstacles you've overcome and that kind of stuff. But why don't you tell the story of how you first met and how that went? You mean on Plenty of Fish? That's what I mean. Well, the story goes, we were both on Plenty of Fish, and we initiated a conversation with each other, and she tried to trick me. She tried to trick you? She tried to trick me and asked me what my favorite author was, Okay. because in my Plenty of Fish profile, I indicated that I like to read, and she tried to call my bluff. But it wasn't a bluff, was it? It wasn't a bluff. And so then I mentioned a few books, and uh, we moved from Plenty of Fish to MSN Messenger. Ooh. Mm-hmm. Upgrade. Upgrade. Very nice. Mm-hmm. And what were your immediate impressions of this brother of mine? Well, I didn't like his name. You didn't like his name? No. Nope. Okay. And likewise, at the time, her name was Debbie. Right. That is true. Also did not like my name either. Right. I wasn't a big fan of her name. Okay. But I didn't hold it against her. Well, it's not her fault. Not her fault. Yeah. Can't help that. I mostly said Kurt instead of Curtis for oh. a while, but okay, I wouldn't do that now. No. I prefer Curtis. You prefer Curtis over Kurt now? Yeah. Okay. And it was, what, about two years ago that you decided to change your name from Debbie to Curtis? Yeah. No. Well, You're wrong. Am I wrong? From Debbie to Kate. Yeah. She just no. trying to take my... <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Okay. That would be awkward. That would be so awkward. I didn't even catch that. Good good, yeah. good, good catch. <laughs> uh, yeah, because I hated my name and we were at camp and... For your birthday. For my birthday. And I know. I was there. I remember that discussion. We weren't there that day, though. Well, no. no that we weekend. were alone. We were alone and... Which doesn't happen often. So that was nice. Was yeah, we're, yes. Yes. Just trying to get my attention and said the D word and I got mad. Mm-hmm. We were both a few beers in at this point mm-hmm. as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She didn't like that I called her Debbie. Right. And, uh, and I never have. And, and so our I said, whole entire you... relationship, he has called me girlfriend or fiance, hun, fiance mm-hmm. and then wife. And only pulled out Debbie when I was completely... Doing something wrong. Not listening. Okay. Fair. No, I don't get in trouble. No, that's good. Okay, let's go back to Plenty of Fish, though, because if my memory is correct, mm-hmm. it was it was quite the thing. Uh, you made her wait, because normally Plenty of Fish is just a hookup app, and that's what your intentions were, or were you looking for a long term? Mm, that was my intention. You were looking for a, a good time? Yeah. Well, I was either way. Yeah, you were you were open to whatever I happened. I was open to whatever happened. Um, but we moved to Messenger and chatted for two, three weeks. Yeah, like for like 14 hours at a time. Yeah. Like we just got off to go to sleep and then 
So yeah, all day, lot, every day. A lot of chatting uh, mm-hmm. online. Um, for about three weeks. For yeah, two or three weeks. Okay. And so felt like I got to know her pretty good uh, just through Messenger. I would hope so. Um, and then from there, we decided to uh, meet in real life. IRL. Was it scary? Were you oh. nervous? I was. I pretended not to be, but yes, absolutely. Okay. He walked in super cocky, like he owned the place. That's but, pretty much how he operates. Yeah. <laughs> but to jump back, um, during our conversations, uh, I don't know how we came upon it, but um, we would give each other points for points. saying something nice or um, being you funny with each other. Answers. Or whatever it was, it was just a, a thing, right? So, uh, you know, she asked me how my day was, or or said she liked something that I liked. I'd give her a point or whatever, uh. and then she kind of started doing that back to me. And upon our first meeting um, in the donut stop, which no longer exists, sadly, mm. we I walked in and she was sitting in a booth already, and uh, I, I sat down and I can't remember. It might have been five points, ten points. Something, For, something large because you you weren't ever generous. Yeah, I was not points. generous with the points. So yeah. this time I had probably 10 points or something like that. And one of the first things I said to her was 10 points for being cute. Oh, yeah. good. Very nice. And then I went like this. You, you, hid, your, you hid your head <laughs> in your arms. <laughs> she did. Because you were embarrassed. For almost the whole... Yeah. And then she excused thing. herself to go to the bathroom to text her friend to let the friend know that I wasn't a creep and she didn't need to be saved. Yeah, we had code word. I had to call her and say one word or the other, and one of them meant come get me. Okay, fair, fair, yep. And she didn't tell her friend to come get her. And so, but then there ended up being questionable items in the back of his car. Mm, Yes, that was funny. I like to camp. Yes. Right? You know, like hiking and hiking camping and, and all camping that. and sort of stuff. You just came back from... And I just came back and I had a shovel, a tarp, and a rope of course. in the back of my trunk. <laughs> and uh, of course that became a running joke with, with us because she was like, you don't have anything uh, questionable in, in your trunk, do you? And so I popped it open and I was like, actually I do. So then he didn't drive me home, he walked me home. Oh, mm-hmm. that's that's very chivalrous of you. All the way across the street yeah. from the donut stop. It was really far. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it was brutal. It must have worked up quite a sweat. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. There was a parking lot in between. Uh-huh. And so, you know, that was taxing. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, I, uh, I walked her home. And uh, we made out pretty heavily in her lobby. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, and then we um, pushed away and decided not to go any further. And uh, it, was a, it, was a good, uh, it was a good first uh, kiss. Good, good. And I, I remember a story from back in the day that the original purpose of the meeting was a hookup, but you made her wait for quite a while. Is that true? Is my memory correct? I don't know that it was an initial hookup, the first meeting. I think the first meeting we were just meeting at the donut stop to Yeah, that, meet I don't think that, that's what we meant for. My intention was only that. Yeah, and I had the similar intention. I just want... I generally didn't do one night stands or, or meet somebody and do, do the that things. Right. In, in the first meeting. So, um, that but I did. <laughs> <laughs> Were you not, a, a, not a lot, but I had just, I was just like from a long term relationship. Right. So yeah, and and I was kind of doing similar things, but not a lot. But mm-hmm. was using plenty of fish for for hookups as as our brother Robin. Um, indicated to me that that was the place to go. Okay. Uh, because that's what he was doing. Aha. Uh-huh. Uh, because so we I have was, Robin to thank for this. Yes. Huh. Because I was like, Robin, how are you getting all these girls? Because he was telling me about all these girls. He was all the time. And right. And he was like, oh, plenty of fish. And I was like, what's that? And he's like, oh, it's a website for hooking up. And I was like, all right. So I went on it. Yeah. And fished around and, and you got one and i caught one good for you yes thank you okay but uh the, the initial uh, bedroom encounter was was delayed yes yes so there was a, a movie date maybe we went for a mm-hmm. car ride uh we made out in the car quite heavily uh she was ready to go right then and there <laughs> right thank you i can't believe this is okay <laughs> um anyway. and uh i decided that uh I saw a potential future in the relationship, and I knew that if we uh, had intercourse right then and there, I would probably just be done right, and, and not go back for seconds. 
so I decided <laughs> that uh, I, I wanted this to maybe be a relationship, a long-term relationship, and uh, so I told her that she had to wait. And, and did you ask her if she wanted a long-term relationship or if she saw the potential? What did you think? Was it was there? Did you feel that immediately? I don't know if we said anything out loud. Yeah. No, okay. No, okay. I, I don't think so, but... Um, you made her wait. I, I told her she had to wait a month. And, uh, and I was happy to wait a month. You were happy? Well, I, I don't know if happy is the right word. You no, weren't, thr- you weren't no, thrilled? I think that actually made her more eager to... <laughs> I definitely tried to change his mind right. a lot. But this was a, a good maneuver on your part to show her that you saw long-term potential and you just didn't want to mm, and be done. Yeah, and this is where I learned about the stubbornness that are the Vanderloos. But did we actually go a month? Yes. Wasn't it more like You told me, Lucas said, two weeks. Excuse me? Uh, two weeks. You and Lucas had this conversation where it's like this two-week window, but you made me wait a month instead. Did I make you actually wait the month? Yes, you did. Oh, wow. That was good of me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Because if you have sex within the first two weeks, yeah. you generally don't commit to that relationship. It's a lot. Makes sense. Yeah. Because okay. you haven't built enough personal connection, um, and then it just becomes more about the sex, and yeah, move on to the next person. Right. Which isn't a bad thing if that's what you're doing. If that's what you're going for. Of course. Of course. No shame, obviously. No shame. So what I want to know next about, I don't want the details. I want to know. You will not get the details. Perfect. <laughs> I, I want to know: was it was the first encounter mind blowing? Was it mediocre? Was there uh, indefinite improvement needed? And you can tell us right after this commercial for another podcast right here on the ESO Network. Great things are coming on the Nerd Bliss Podcast. We're changing up our presentation while keeping the candidness that you enjoy. We'll cover all your favorite shows and movies with maybe a few surprises along the way. And you, yes, you, will have opportunities to be on our show on a regular basis. That's right. We've got the Zoom Pro account and we're going to use it. So be ready. Find us at nerdblisspodcast.com and esonetwork.com and on all the socials at nerdblisspod. Nerdbliss, listen up. And we're back. So (laughs) how was it? Was it fantastic, Curtis? It was pretty damn good. There you go. And you? What did you think, Kate? Well, I thought, I mean, I'm here still. You are still here? Yeah. Yes. I don't don't think we've ever discussed whether or not either one of us were good. Yeah. Huh. Well, that was a perfect time. It wasn't a conversation, I don't think. But it must have been good because you're still here. Still here. Okay. So how did the relationship develop afterwards? Well, I befriended your mother. Yes. That's always a good thing. She befriended me. She liked me. Mm -hmm. Did you have tea with her? Because that was very important to her. And I knew it was. He kind of... um, Forewarned you? He was an excellent coaching person of... Of all that is your mom? Yes. I explained how to navigate her. Yeah. Yeah, because right. mom was a complicated person yeah. with a lot of quirks and idiosyncrasies. Mm-hmm. And he mm-hmm. taught me well, and I'd say that I pretty, like, rock starred that out for the most part. Yep, and she thought you were cute, looked like a librarian, and had a cute had nose. a cute nose. You do have a cute nose. You have a cute nose. Yes. <laughs> so that was mom's impression of her. Okay. And, uh... Once mom likes somebody, it makes it way easier to carry on with the relationship. Oh, yes. <laughs> I had so. her approval, and and I had tea whether he was home or not. So I'd good, go good over job. and visit and have the tea. And, yeah, and it wasn't only for him. I did enjoy yeah. that time with her. Mm-hmm. Yep. So they became friends outside of our relationship, and uh, nice. it just made it even easier. And uh, it progressed by, uh, well, here's the thing. Um, her previous long-term relationship had set the bar super low so you, for me. So you, you didn't have much work to do to be, uh, mm. to be, to make an impression. No. Right. Uh, mm. so taking her to the movies, uh, scored me lots of points. Taking me to the movies and paying for also my ticket was right. pretty awesome. You didn't expect that? No. I assumed I was paying your own way. Stuff. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So... Just by going out, uh, being nice, <laughs> treating her, treating her well, uh, getting her a gift every now and Good again. Good morning text. Just the little things. Yeah. That you were missing before. Yep. Okay. So the relationship progressed. There was a breakup for a certain amount of time. There was. How, how long after you guys started seeing each other did that happen? And how long did it last for? I can't remember these details. Nor can I. So hopefully she can. 
I think we were only dating about two months and we broke up for about a month and a half. Was it only two months in when that happened? It was fairly early because... Because there was only the one breakup, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were like official in the beginning of September and it was in December when we did our Sudbury trip and that's when uh, our co-worker, my co-worker, got involved in some Mm -hmm. you, Nate... Yes. Stops. Nate being your kid. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so there because was some Because I was trying to go away with you for the weekend, but you, I was trying to get you to switch the day that you had Nate or something along those lines, mm-hmm. which mm-hmm. you didn't tell me about originally. Yes. You never told me you had a one-year-old child while we were dating. Ooh. And early on, I didn't have the paternity test results. I didn't right. actually know yet. Yeah. Okay, fair. So it was information I had withheld. Uh, yeah. Until you were confirmed that it was yours. Yeah. Also, I knew it was going to complicate the matters in terms of having a relationship. So. And it did a little bit yeah. at right. first right. because... That's a lot to take in. It's a lot. So uh, I had my coworker in my ear, da 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 screw the baby mama, basically, which obviously isn't the way to do that, but I didn't navigate that before. So mm-hmm. uh, Shauna overstepped her boundaries, basically, and I let her. Yeah, really, um, really pushed me aggressive. aggressively in a direction that I didn't necessarily want to go in. It was still a very sensitive situation, and and he felt cornered, and he broke up with you, right? Yeah, did, yeah. He pieced out. He's right. like, "Okay, bye. I'm gonna go now." And and how did the uh, reconciliation happen? Uh, he decided he would still be my friend. That was big of you. Um. Only because she carried on having a relationship with mom. Yeah. Uh, <coughs> aggressively. Yes, I do yep. vaguely remember uh, this. Bumpa called me persistent like a dog. Oh, very nice. Yeah, he was yeah. not the uh, the most um, diplomatic. And I was. I wasn't giving up. So. Because you I, saw what you liked and you wanted it and yeah, you were going to pursue it. I wasn't done yet. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I did that and he... Gave me a really nice Mother Day card that said, from your friend, <laughs> love your friend or something. We'll, nice. we'll see, maybe something. No, from your friend. It was no love. Yeah. From your friend. But it still said, we'll see, maybe something. Mm. Like, because when I, in my whole life, when somebody says, we'll see. It means no. No, it means yes. Oh. And for me, it's always meant and no. And for him, right. it's always meant no. Of course. And we'll so, see means no. <laughs> so that was an adjustment by itself. I bet. Okay, so you guys got back together and everything was fantastic after you worked out some details? Well, I don't think it caused much of a, a rift. I feel like we just kind of picked back up where yeah, we left off. basically. Okay, okay. And then, and then what happened? I also ended up not really being friends with that group of people anymore. Yeah, once you broke up with those friends, it made the relationship way easier because they caused a lot of chaos mm-hmm. in amongst... Not only us, but the, you and them as well. Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of there was a lot of high school drama. Ah, uh, yes. And we were no longer in high school. No. Well, well out of high school by that point. Well out of high school, and yeah. it just was. She was, said. She said. This, they said that, this happened. Blah, blah, yeah. Blah. Right. Okay. And then it was kind of like a I'm spending time with him instead of them kind of thing, and. Yeah. No. And then we just started uh, camping and. I think that was some of the mm-hmm. er, early fun adventures that we had, mm-hmm. uh, particularly one of our first camping trips. Where uh, we almost died? Or was that? No, I think that was a different yeah. one. And that was oh, a that heat was, stroke. That was the pizza pops. Yeah. yeah. So the first one was uh, we had camp cookers. And uh, they're, they're just uh, metal pieces that you stick together and put food in and, mm-hmm. and cook over the fire. And for that adventure, we decided that that's all we were bringing with us was to cook with these things and so we prepped the meals Mm. and we really kind of hoped that the weather was good because we didn't have an alternative uh, cooking source except the fire Uh, but the weather was good Mm. and uh, we we had good meals we had like chicken and potatoes and veggies and everything and did all sorts of Mm. uh, unique things with with these and uh, and that was just fun just Mm -hmm. her and I hanging out drinking some beer cooking some food and spending some alone time together. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I think I thought to uh, kind of built the bonds. And... Mm-hmm. Okay, and that carried on for a bit. And then how long before you guys moved in with each other? 
because you were living at home still with with mom. Yeah, uh, 2010, October 2010, I think we moved in together. Okay, and you guys started seeing each other in what year? 2008. Six. 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 Well, Fifteen years. 15, yeah. Six, 2006. Six. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it was so. 2010 when you moved in together. So four years apart before you made the plunge. Yeah, were we waiting for you to graduate first, or you already were? We already moved in. I think we were trying to get more financially secure. Yeah. And then... Because uh, I went back to school. Yeah. In there. You before you SW moved. course. Yeah. And I was trying to finish my CA designation. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and then we... Well, really, you told me that it was time. <laughs> well, you told him. Okay, yeah. Curtis, it's time for us to move in together. It's been four years. Let's do this thing. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I knew it was time to get out of my mother's house as well. It, it was past time. It was, it you, was you were 28 time. years old. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah. were... Yeah. I moved out when I was 17, so anybody that was like over 18 that still lived at home, I was like, what? Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you, you found a place together? We found a place together. First, we did a budget and made sure we could figure mm-hmm. out what we could afford and whatnot. And then, uh, yeah, we found a place and uh, it was really nice. Then we first looked at it yeah <laughs> and it got small as we got a, into a larger family right because you came into the relationship with two kids mm-hmm. you came into the relationship with two kids yes. mm-hmm. now you each have three kids and there's five kids all together correct yes. okay give your mo- give your listeners a moment to figure out that math yes yeah hey this is dr trek larry nimichek and you're listening to soul forge with sean vanderloo perfect Mm-hmm. But yes, that's that's true. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, so we uh, we moved in together. We she spent felt 10 like years there. she felt like it was my house and not her house. Why is that? Uh, I'm not 100 percent sure. A lot of the things we bought, you bought. Yes, I had originally. credit. She didn't have credit, and I bought the stuff. But we bought it together. We, yeah, but it was your. It was in my name. It was your mind. Everything was in your name, right. basically. And I never even, I never even like crossed your mind. Crossed my mind. So I felt like a... it was his house, and I just kind of crashed it. Ah. And so. And I didn't feel that way, and so I. Because you guys had found it right. together. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, so we, we had. Found... I wouldn't say we had like a bad time, but I was upset for a little bit because I was trying to adjust. You and... needed more time to adjust than I did. Oh yeah. Yeah. And you wanted to feel like you were pulling your own weight. Yeah. Basically. Okay. okay. Which at the time she was earning more money than me, so right. she was definitely pulling her weight. But I didn't feel like it because you bought all the stuff. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair. And so you lived there for almost ten years. Yep. And then now we're uh, at this place here. Yep. And you've had it for how long? A little over two. A little over mm-hmm. two years now. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's the background. That's the details. What is the success? Uh, what is the secret of your success? How do you make your relationship work? Like when you have conflicts, like tell me all of this stuff here. How does this work? So, the, so there is no secret, uh, but one of the main components I believe is before I do something, I consider how it may look and or impact her. Ah. And so before I make a decision uh, or do something, you consider it from her point of view. I consider it from her point of view first. And if I think that she'll be okay with it, then I proceed. And if I don't think she'll be okay with it, uh, I don't proceed and or have a conversation with her. That is very mm-hmm. wise. Not a lot of people do this. Okay. And I would say I do the same and probably learn that from him. Okay. Because I didn't have good communication skills with any other relationship because I was just responsible for everything. Right. Right. Because... Now it's, we're both responsible for everything. Trying to share responsibility, yeah. Mm. You guys got married in 2012? Yes. Mm-hmm. August. Yes. 18th. August 18th of 2012 mm-hmm. at uh, Igua Bay. Igua Bay, in right. Superior Park. I was there. You were. I remember. Right yes, good times. Good times ahead by all. Oh, very good. Yes. It was chilly. It was chilly. It was, it was very cold for the middle of August, actually. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The, the weather was, didn't cooperate with us, but... Flipped we, up the back of my wedding gown as a blanket. Right. That's right. We made it work. You did. Mm-hmm. You did. And what else can you tell me that uh, has either been a challenge or a success or a win for you guys? How do you deal with each other's children? Well, I think at the beginning, my children were shit shows. Mm-hmm. And they needed... Discipline. Discipline and father figure because bio dad was not. 
Right. He, he's a bit of a mess. Still. Yes. So he took that on with a ton of resistance. Mm-hmm. Nate was never a problem. There was some dynamics there, I think, uh, with his mom kind of being like, he'd come back and parrot back things like, you're not mummy, you're only Debbie kind of thing. Mm. And I never once told him to call me mummy, but right. he was getting fed that kind of stuff. But he was always easy because he was little. He was he was a toddler, so he was easy. Sam was back and forth. I got some sass from her for mm-hmm. sure. Oh, yeah. Um, when we'd go visit, he'd, he'd be pretty nice to her, and I think we had a fight or two about that. Not a fight fight, but... What? You're treating my kids like they're your own. Treat yours like your own because you aren't you aren't doing for her what you're doing for mine. Right, because your, your oldest daughter mm-hmm. lives how many hours away down south? Eight. Eight hours? Okay. Yeah. 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 And so not totally involved all the time, so I would go down there and, and spoil her because I wasn't around much and I could mm-hmm. see how that would reflect poorly uh, right. when I'm disciplining. Yeah, she sometimes... She was doing the same things as my kids, and it was okay, kind of thing. So, because it's hard to go and see visit somebody and sure, yeah, parent them, right? Right, because so, so yeah. there was those dynamics, of course. And, um, I wouldn't say it was a huge thing, but it was a thing no, but for you, a little you'd bit. Vent your frustration, and yeah, um, you, you didn't uh, hold in resentment, so you, you let it be known that there was something yeah. bothering you. I right. mean, I held it in for a bit because I just get quiet. And don't say anything, and then he waits until I'm ready to talk about it, which is also important. You Waiting have to know. Well, you don't have to maybe do that with everybody, but he would, knows that I about me. I would like to get on, uh, into the conversation immediately, immediately. Um, where but she does not. She needs process. She needs time, yeah. and uh, I've learned to give her that time, and it ends up being a much more fruitful conversation. Yeah. Um, so you know, I, I put my own needs aside sometimes, uh, mm-hmm. and. Is it a need or is it a is it a want? I don't know. Uh, it's not important enough to force the issue, right? Um, if it makes her uncomfortable. If he forces, I just cry and leave, ah. and then I shut down completely, and we don't talk about and then we're it further, at all. Yeah, then we're further yeah. away from where we were trying to get to, and so I've learned to adapt, and it really hasn't been that much of a challenge for me. Well, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so overall, what would you say is the biggest piece of advice you would give for somebody who's in maybe a difficult relationship or just starting out or, or something like that? I don't know if there's one piece you can give. It's I or just, a piece. I think it's important to go out of your way to make things easier for the other person. And if you're both doing that, then everything's easier. That makes sense. Yeah. Like it's just... It's small gestures, but it, it makes everything run smoothly and helps. It's the little things that count. Yeah. Yeah, honestly. Like, I don't know. I know she's had a long day at work. I run her a bath. Uh, sometimes too hot. <laughs> right, right. Oh, my God, that one time. I'm like, oh, no. I thought, you were, I thought she was going to be longer, so I put it up really hot. Of course. Expecting it to cool down. And I was cool like, down. no, well, I've burnt three layers of my skin. She just jumped in. And, oh, right, so right. That, that's, yeah. that's silly stuff. Um, yeah, be considerate um, is, is the biggest one. Um, actively look for ways to um, improve the other person's life. Um, and, and it's really the little things. So I like to go camping or hiking with, with my buddies, uh, and she would deshell the pistachios mm-hmm. for me. Ah. And if that is not an act of true love... I don't know what is because that hurts the fingers. Yeah, it does. <laughs> and she sat there and did that. And early on, I also didn't like pretzels. Okay. And she would take a mixed bag of the party mix bites. or whatever, bits and bites, and she'd pick all the pretzels, pretzels out for yeah. me. Wow. That's love right there. <laughs> right? And that is super, like super the, the, the little things. Just it making the snack the easy things. for him to eat without having to pick around all the pretzels. Which she absolutely didn't need to do. Right. Uh, but I thoroughly appreciated it. Of that. course. And so then I looked for ways to return the favor in some fashion. On our donut stop date, one of the things he said was, I go camping May long weekend with my friends every year. If that's not okay, it's, it's a, a deal breaker. breaker. So I set some early yeah. expectations. So so set the expectations early. But I don't care, and I never cared. And in fact, I encourage him to plan those trips, like he's doing a week in August with 
The boys. The boys. Right. Yeah. We actively plan our schedule around it. I'm off this week so I can cover Rylan. You go do that, and then we're going to go. But I encourage after that. her to also go out with friends. Of course. And do her own thing and have yeah. her own interests. You have a life outside of each other. Yes. Mm-hmm. Which is important. It is. And not a lot of people know that. Possibly not. Because they make their life the other person, and that's it. Mm-hmm. So little things, communication. Communication is a big one. Uh, we generally don't fight. Uh, we discuss things. We uh, does this work for you? No. Uh, does this work for you? Yes. Okay. Let's try this. Compromise. Or compromise. Mm-hmm. Compromise is one of the biggest ones. And uh, you know, I don't think it feels like a compromise when you also put the other person in consideration. It's okay. just a solution instead yeah. of a compromise. Because you have a common goal exactly. of harmony and peace and love and all that good stuff. Yeah. We don't have the energy to fight. We don't well, need. We don't need. That too, yes. Yeah, but we don't need to fight well, about it when we can work it out without fighting. You, you guys also have a packet of kids, so yeah, that's exhausting too. I'm sure. It can be right. Yeah. Okay, for sure. Very good. Yes. Any uh, final words of wisdom, or is that a pretty good place to end it? I think that's a pretty good place to end it. All right. Well, I've been trying to get you guys on the podcast for years, so appreciate you doing this with me. Oh, I appreciate you uh, getting us on here and uh, having a nice conversation with us and letting your listeners listen. Definitely, definitely. So listeners, uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always email us at soulforgepodcast at gmail.com. But until next time, uh, take care of yourselves, love each other, uh, follow the advice that uh, Curtis and Kate have provided for you for a successful relationship, and remember... Intimacy is the capacity to be rather weird with someone and finding that that's okay with them. Keep fit and have fun. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Soul Forge podcast. Your support is greatly appreciated, and we hope you'll tune in again next time. Remember that you can visit soulforgepodcast.com for all of our social media links. And don't forget to share the show with everyone you know. The Soul Forge podcast is your best source for living your best life. Think about it. This has been a broadcast of the ESO Network. Be part of the crew and help support our shows by donating to our ESO Patreon or by shopping for the Tee Public Store, which can all be found at www.esonetwork.com. The ESO Network, your station for all things geek.